Hi, Peter Charles here of Hook for Life Fly Fishing. And today I thought, well, let's take a, a look at uh, basic stream craft. In other words, moving around the stream, reading the water, getting a feel for what's there, how to approach problems, this sort of thing. Uh, and I didn't put this video together in any particular order. It's just, I went fishing the other day, I took a GoPro with me, and then I've just taken chunks of that and illustrated certain things that I did to, uh, to try and fish a particular feature. And some things I, I, I looked for as well and some things I tried to avoid and how to get over a problem as well. So uh, let's get into the first one where I approach the creek uh, with the intent to fish dry flies and it doesn't work out. So let's see how I handle that. Okay, I just want to talk briefly about approaching a small creek with the intent of trying to fish dries. And uh, you notice I'm not in the creek, I'm standing above it, I'm having a look. A few things I'm looking for. Obviously, are there any rises from fish? I don't see any at the moment. Do I see any bugs in the air? No. Do I see any swallows in the air? No. Swallows are a good sign when they're flying above the surface of the creek that there's something going on. Now, what we can do too is come in around, you know, look at little bankside bushes and trees to see if there's any insects in them and there's none. So this doesn't look very promising for dry fly fishing. So rather, I've got a, my dry fly set up here, my uh, um, Lumisen RX plus uh, eight and a half foot four weight. This is what I normally use for dry flies, but there's no dry fly activity. So what I'll do is I'll come in here with a wet fly and specifically I'll come in with a wet fly that is you know, intended for being really just a, an attractor pattern. Okay, in this segment, uh, I have a problem with overhanging branches, deadfall, nice run, the water is going into the deadfall and, and running alongside of it, and casting, yes, it could get a cast into that, but it would be a bit problematic, and it's not as obvious here in the clip, but there's a lot of small branches sticking out. So, you know, you could easily uh, drop a cast on one of those branches. So I took a different approach uh, and I didn't cast, I did something else. So let's take a look. So the most I can do in here, I've got overhanging branches, I've got deadfall. So what I will do is simply move my fly from side to side in here. I'm not gonna try and cast in here. I use the current to move my fly around. When you've got this much in the way of deadfall, there's overhanging branches and everything else. It's kind of difficult to uh, get a cast in and be accurate and not snag out. Okay, in this segment, we'll look at a different uh, problem. I've got a lot of stuff behind me. I don't have to make a, a, a relatively long cast for that little creek. Uh, and I have to be accurate. I have to put it beside some deadfall. Uh, so instead of overhead casting, I went into spay casting. Now, yeah, that's a more advanced form of casting, but it's not that difficult to do with a, a, a single hander at short distance. Uh, it's not insurmountable to learn, and it, this gives you an opportunity to see how I can use a spay cast to get a fly into a, a, a tight spot with stuff behind me. And the other thing I would did too is to help sink the fly and get it around the deadfall, I walked the fly down a little bit. In other words, I cast out and took a step and, and sunk the fly down. That's a steelhead technique, and it works just fine here as well. So let's take a look. A lot of people think you need specialized lines to spay cast, but when you're fishing for trout with tiny flies, the, lo the regular overhead line that you have on your reel will do the job. right in underneath that tree. There's no sweeper in there. There's got to be a fish in that corner. There's got to be. I just need to get a little bit closer. Yeah, 
right up there, yeah. See, now I'm walking my fly down. So it goes uh, without tension for a little bit of the way. There we go. When you learn to fly fish, it's a good idea to be able to cast on both sides of your body. Now, you could use your opposite hand or you could cast across your body. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Left hand up is a little bit better. But, you know, you should be able to cast on both sides of your body. And the most common reason is to deal with wind. But here's a different reason. I'm able to change the speed of my presentation by changing the angle at which my fly line crosses the current, whether it's more downstream or more cross stream, by casting either on my right side or my left side. So by casting on my left side in this particular case, I was able to get a presentation that was more downstream so the fly came across the stream more slowly. So let's take a look. Now I have room to cast on my right side of my body if I wanted to. But I'm casting on my left side of my body so the angle of the cast is closer to parallel with the current. If I cast on my right side, it would be a little bit more broadside and the fly would move a little bit faster. So one of the things to consider being able to cast on both sides of the body is that you can actually control the angle of your swing by the uh, side of the body you cast on. Because if I come in here on, on my right side, the, fly li uh, the line lands a little bit more uh, across the current and uh, it moves across faster. So, you know, keep in mind that you can use both sides of your body. You can control the speed of the swing just by whether you make it land more downstream or more across stream. One of the common mistakes I see people make is when they approach a, a good looking pool, they'll go right up to the edge. Even if they're not going to fish that spot, they're just going to walk along the edge to scout it out. Nothing wrong with that, generally speaking, but uh, when the water conditions are low and clear like they are right now, I'm probably just going to end up spooking a bunch of fish. So uh, notice how I approach this pool. I'm still checking it out, but I'm well back. I am not skylined. Uh, I'm, more, I'm up against the, uh, the trees behind me. So uh, I'm not skylined and the fish can't see me as easily. I can walk the, the length of that pool and not disturb it and, and come back down fishing. So let's take a look. This pool is still in shade, which is a good thing. So I'm going to start at the top end and work my way down. Still no rises, still no hatches. And that's the thing, be prepared for wet flies and dry flies. Don't be prepared just for dries, because you can end up with a very slow day. It's much better to be able to uh, switch off from one type to another. So right where that tree comes down, there are some very snaggy branches, but I just have to watch out for those. Now, sometimes we want to swing a wet fly through some slow water. Now, uh, there could be fish in slow water. We always think of them being under current, but they could be beside the current in slower water. The thing is, if you present a wet fly in a typical fashion, it, it looks dead in slow water. So, you know, we don't normally think of stripping wet flies. We think of stripping streamers, but not wet flies. We normally think of a downstream swing or an upstream dead drift. We don't normally think of stripping. But don't be afraid to do a slow strip through slow water when that's your only choice. So let's take a look. When your wet fly gets into slower water, don't be afraid to strip it a little slowly. Because it just hangs in slow water and looks dead. So you can get fish on a wet fly if you're stripping it. Now, just because we're wearing waders doesn't mean we have to be in the water all the time. Uh, if you've been looking at these videos, you'll see sometimes I'm fishing from the bank, and that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm not going to get into the water. It's, there's no reason to do it. And uh, I think this is a habit we get into is that we've got waders on. We feel we must be in the water, but we don't have to be. Let's have a look. That was a hit that log. I'm uh, dicing with trouble there. 
I'm lucky I didn't snag up. Work a shorter line under this tree would be a little bit more controlled. You notice I am up on the bank doing this. Now, this creek changes every year with uh, ice out and deadfall. In this case, we have what was at one time pretty well an open bend has been closed off, creating back eddies and pool, uh, quiet pools uh, at the downstream end of deadfall. So I'm not ignoring those. I'm going to put a fly into those. I have caught fish out of structures like this in the past. And you'd be surprised what can be lurking in there. So just because you see some what looks like frog water uh, behind some deadfall, don't ignore it. Put a cast or two in there. There's deadfall all through here, but my fly is going to be swinging high enough. I shouldn't hit any of it unless there's a branch sticking up, which I can't see. cast into that slow stuff over there. Now another reason for casting on both sides of the body is it gives you opportunities to work around uh, obstacles. In this case there's an overhanging dead tree. If I cast my right hand I'll probably put my line into it, but if I cast on the left side of my body I can come in underneath it without any problem whatsoever. So let's see how that works. Okay, I can't cast on that side anymore, so I go to my left side, get around that tree. This is being able to cast on both sides of your body really works out. Because if I cast on my right side, I'm going to be into that tree. Okay, here I have that very slow elbow pool. I did see one rise. I know roughly where it was. I saw it from the other side. So I thought, okay. There are some small fish that are showing some willingness to come up. I'm going to run a wet fly near the surface. Uh, it's a low probability method. But the issue here is I have obstacles behind me and look how I got around it by casting sidearm out over the creek rather than try to cast over my head and put the fly into the tree behind me. You can see there's no single rise in here anywhere. Normally I'd be in this position with a sinking line on a big streamer, but since I saw a couple of fish come up, I will uh, see if I can encourage them with a wet fly near the surface. Okay, in this clip, watch me screw up and watch me get out of it. I was too busy talking, I wasn't paying attention to the amount of line I had out, and I cast right across a log, and of course I hooked up on it, snagged up on it, and I successfully roll cast it off. So let's see what that looks like. Fish it both ways, which is what I'm going to do here. But when you're fishing a small fly uh, as a streamer, keep your strips short and slow. Small fish tend to move in short jerks. They don't move in long um, flowing motions like a larger bait fish would. Oh no, oh no. Uh, I am well and truly sunk. I just tied this thing on too. Did I break it off? No, it's still there. Amazing. Okay, I've done all that casting and all that rigmarole, getting around stuff and freeing myself from a snag. Did I catch any fish? Well, I did hook a few. So here's a here's a small sample. There we go. Oh, got off.
There we go. Little guy. Even these little guys pull hard. It's, it's hilarious. Okay, let's get this guy off. There we go. Oh, there we go. Another one. Quite little jumpers. Okay, that's a, a small sample of some things I do when I go fishing on a small creek and some of the maneuvers I have to do to get around obstacles and some ways of coping with things, even screwing up. So I'm going to do a few more of these uh, uh, as the season progresses. I hope you find them useful. Uh, as I say, they're not structured in any particular way. They're just a collection of things I run across on the day's fishing. Cheers. <laughs>